guys. How's it going over there? It's good. How are you doing? Back good. in KC. Yep, we're here. I'm here in the MIAA office in Kansas City, Missouri. You guys in Espathia, Spain, Espana, right? Yes. Yeah, see. <laughs> so both of you guys playing on the same team right now, same professional team over in Spain. I don't even want to attempt to pronounce the name. Um, ISB, I know, but um, I think you guys can maybe tell us a little bit better about what team you're playing for right now. Go ahead. You um, try to pronounce it. Go I ahead. Think I don't mind. My best, my best attempt at pronouncing what our club name is, I would say Erogi Saski Baloya, which is basically um, in Basque, it just means like Erogi Basketball Club, basically. And our, okay. our sponsor is Juanisti, so a lot of times they call us Juanisti ISB. Cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. That sounds really good. So Better job than I would have done, for your sure. Your Basque is coming along pretty well. Um, mm, no. <laughs> but, you know, first of all, just in general, how has it been over there? You guys have been over there for, you know, some months, I know. And so just how has your experience been thus far? Um, It's good. Um, I mean, this is my second year here. I came here last uh, December. So I was, you know, kind of more acquainted to the city and, and the lifestyle and and how it was, the Cobb was, but um, I guess we've been here together now for about six months, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, so um, it's good. We're really enjoying it. Um, second place in our division right now, so I mean, I don't have any complaints. Yeah, it's good. It's It's been a good experience for like my first year, just uh, having somebody that I knew to come out here, you know, and uh, already have like one friend already that I know out here. He can kind of show me around, show me the way, so... That's been really good for me, I think. So, Jacob, for you, um, you know, having Spencer, knowing about the team and everything, were you kind of asking him questions and getting some insight um, to help affect your decision to go over there and play? Yeah, once I realized that they were, like, interested, you know, I started asking them about, like, how is it or whatever, this and that. And then once I got offered, I was like, what's up? you think I should come or not? And, like, obviously he wanted me to come. And, you know, I was I really enjoyed playing with him at UCM, so uh, I was excited to be able to have the chance to come play with him again. So, yeah, he had already kind of informed me about a lot of stuff before I even got here, a lot of stuff that I had no idea, but I had a clue about it, you know, beforehand just because of talking to him, so it was good. So, actually, during your UCM career, both of you had the chance to go over to Brazil and play um, for Coach Carlos Kent on the USA men's team, Division II national team. Um, would you say that that kind of sparked an interest for you guys to go play professional overseas? Um, I would say so a little bit. Um, just seeing the level of competition and like just how different it is from college basketball, just how the rules are a little bit different here and there, and um, just when it comes to the overall game, uh, that was you know that was South America, which you know that was my first taste of professional basketball outside of seeing and watching you know NBA G League games. Um, that was my first taste of really seeing what the professional life was like, um, I guess like FIBA affiliated. And even though that was different than what, you know, we experience now, but that, that really did give a spark. And I was like, man, this would be fun to do, um, for a couple of years or however long I can, you know, make it worth, um, after my college experience. The differences in college basketball and now, you know, overseas basketball and professional basketball, can you kind of explain, you know, just what you see that's different over there right now? Um, man, I'll, I'll go since, you know, I'm new, so I, go ahead. the differences are fresher go ahead, go ahead, since yeah. my first year. Um, I think the biggest difference is probably from playing Division II basketball at the highest level to come over here and play professionally is probably the, the size. One, I think just, like, the players are a lot bigger. Like, there's a lot more, like, seven-footers that I have to guard on a nightly basis and stuff like that. And then I'd say two is probably the physicality. No question. For sure, it's a lot more physical. They allow a lot more contact, and you know they allow a lot more like hand checking and a lot more physical play and like the post and things like that. And then I think three, the three biggest things is probably the rules are slightly different. Like they don't call travels the same way. Like there's a thing called like a zero step where you can kind of get like three steps really instead of two. So like when I first got over here, I was like looking at the ref like that's a tra like travel. And then like my coach had to explain to me like no, it's called this. <laughs> and that and there's like this different rule. So I think that's the biggest thing to me at least was probably the size difference, physicality and then just like the rules changing and like 
the referees call the game a lot differently here than they do in the States, for sure. See, all those no. times that you guys thought you were getting fouled, maybe uh, playing over here, they were just preparing you for to go over there. <laughs> that's, no, that's no lie. No, for sure. No, um, for sure. You, you talk about basketball differences. What about just lifestyle and culture differences? Um, you know, what's it, what's it like being over there and outside of basketball, just living in a different country like that? You got this one, buddy. I mean, we're lucky. Like, Spain is, is beautiful. Um, our living arrangements, you know, that the club provides is, is – really top notch like I didn't expect it to be as nice as it was when I got over here um last year and, and living in the same apartment as I did last year um it's different just culturally because you know people are different of course they we don't speak the same language food's different food's different but it, it people ask me all the time they say well you know what do you eat over there like how do you survive I eat, I eat the same stuff that I do at home a lot of times if I'm making it or if you go to a restaurant, it's a little bit different how they how they prepare the meals and and kind of they do like more of the three course meals over here when you go to restaurants and stuff like that. Um, and there's not really any fast food joints unless you go to like a, a bigger city. So I mean, it's 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 a little bit different. Um, it's a challenge sometimes, and some people um, aren't really you know they don't adapt very well. And but it it really hasn't been hard um, for me, and I don't really think it has been for him either. No, it hasn't been too bad. I think. The biggest challenge with like the cultural differences is just um, maybe like the language barrier in some cases, and then, I don't know, like people just act a little bit differently little bit here. Like, like I don't know, like personal space isn't like as big of a thing. <laughs> no, like, no, people no. kind of get all up on you, and it's like it's a little different in that aspect. But and they stare now, worse. They stare really bad. Yeah, they do stare. Especially <laughs> since when they hear us talk, they know we're Americans. Yeah. And, like look at us a little funny, but a little bit. it's not it's not bad though. I like it. I like it a lot here. You talked about you guys being the only two Americans on the team, and looking back at your MIAA careers, you guys were really successful elite players in this conference. Um, I'm not surprised at all that you guys are having a successful professional career overseas. But how did the MIAA prepare you um, for, like you said, that you know really top competition up there over there? Yeah, well, I mean, I think. With MIAA, you know, what you get is, like, you get literally, to me, to me and him both, I think Absolutely. we can both agree. Yeah, I know exactly what you're going to say. By far the best Division Two conference, at least for basketball and for most sports in the country. And, like, you can debate that all you want, but you look at, like, the tournament every year, there's almost always going to be an MIAA team there at the end or in the Final Four, you know, so it's just, I think just playing at the high of a, high of a level where I think – about half the teams in the MIAA at least, maybe even more, could compete at the, like a low Division One level if, if they had to. So, so I think just playing such a high level basketball in MIAA, being a physical conference, you know, where where there is a lot of physicality and stuff too, I think also helped me prepare. Just because, like I said, it's a lot more physical over here, so I think that's helped for sure. No, I mean just to piggyback off what he said, like we're playing dudes that are Division One transfers from high major schools and kids that maybe got overlooked in high school, you know, and MIAA schools. And like and like he said, I, I agree. I think that the MIAA is the best D2 conference in, in the country for basketball and a lot of other sports. Um, I'm not as well-educated on those other ones um, as I would be. But um, just we're going against some of the best guys every night. Uh, and and there's never – I've played in another Division II conference on the East Coast when I was in South Carolina um, my freshman year. And honestly, there were some nights where, you know, we really didn't have to show up and play our A game to win. And that's just the, the truth. And I learned real quick that that doesn't happen um, in the MIAA after we went 14 and 15 my sophomore year, my first year. So you got to show up every night because, you know, anyone in the conference can be anybody. So Explain a little bit um, about kind of the divisions over there. Um, you know, from my understanding, it's, it's not exactly, you know, a conference, or it is, but there's sides, and maybe you guys can kind of help us out a little bit with that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, it, it's weird. Um, the way they do this, and they haven't done it for long. It's only been the last two years in, in Leb Silver, the, the league we play in, which is the third division uh, in Spain. But we have two different conferences. We have an East and a West. Um, and they do it a little bit weird how the top six from ours plays the top six from the other side after you play everyone in your division twice. And they kind of match up, and at the end of that, um, see how they do it in European basketball, how it's different, you know, like from the States, because we only have really two leagues. Um, you can 
you know, either be promoted or I think relegated yeah. down to the to the we can we can go down to the fourth division or we can move up to the second division. Teams are always moving from from uh, I guess levels to levels in this depending on how well you do. If you're middle of the pack, you'll stay in your same division. If you're at the top, you you can win, move up. Um, if you're at the bottom, you know you're playing to to keep yourself from going down. So it's a weird how they do it. It, it takes. Like even when I explain it to, to people who ask, it, it takes a little while to totally grasp it. But um, I don't know. We just try to go out every week because we play once a week. And, and if you win most of your games, you got a good chance of moving up and and being more successful for next year. True. So pretty recently, um, the the cup that you guys have won, Copa Leb. Pla- is that am I saying that right? Plata, Plata, yeah, Plata yeah, is silver. It's silver, yeah, yeah. Okay, Coco so silver, basically, basically yeah. a matchup of the top two teams from each side, and you guys mm-hmm. were able to compete in that and came out with victory. Um, you guys combined for forty-one points, and so explain the atmosphere for that. I know that was a really big deal over there. You started off because so, I didn't start off very well. <laughs> I think, yeah. So whenever we showed up for the game, it was. They had to bring extra bleachers and stuff because, like, the Spanish Basketball Federation basically told us, like, we need to be able to hold more seats to be able to host. So, well, luckily, the club, I don't think they had ever hosted the... No, nah, they, they've, they've never been in it. They've never been in it. They've never hosted it before. So, they were like, okay, whatever we got to do, we're going to do it. So, they brought in some extra bleachers even, and it was packed out. Um, the whole gym was packed, and uh, the fans were going crazy. They had noisemakers, everything. So, yeah. And it started off not great. Um, I was playing well, like, the, the first three quarters. You know, I played pretty well. We were down a half, and we were down even after the third, I think. Right? Yeah, we were still down, like, ten in the fourth. Still down, like, eight or ten going into the fourth. And then I had to give Spencer, you know, a little pep talk. I told him. <laughs> he did, he did. I had to wake him up a little bit, get him going for the fourth. And then Spencer came out and really closed out the fourth for us, and we went on a huge run and ended up getting a win. And it was fun just being able to get a cup for the people of the city, not only at Spathia, but at Spathia, which is like our city nearby that's also part of our club. And then uh, just kind of giving, giving us something to celebrate and, uh, you know, be proud of. Yeah. I mean, he said it pretty, I mean, pretty well. Like, it was a big, it was a huge deal. Like, I didn't understand it until I, you know, maybe like a couple of days before practice when they're, getting all the things per, uh, like prepared and, and put the things on the court and and the interview stuff out there because we never have I mean, we don't have just a ton of that on a regular you know regular game basis uh, but the the federation just came in and, and put a lot of new stuff in and the the fans here it's different like it's it's just different than what it is in the states um, they have drums they have like horns. Yeah, they can bring any kind of noise. Maker. Pretty, pretty <laughs> much, you can bring whatever you want to into the game. Um, it's a lot different than, than it is in the states, but it was a crazy good atmosphere. Um, and you know, we were able to. Cobb did look at me and ask if I was going to finish the game because uh, my first three quarters were bad. <laughs> were so bad. I was I was terrible. And finally, I got I got some things to go my way. Made a few shots, and I think what do we have? Twenty one of our twenty. Something in the fourth quarter? Something like that. You had like 15, I think, and I hit two threes. So, I mean, we was able to, to – luckily we were able to make some shots finally. I was, and, and we were able to celebrate. And the city loved us. for. We had a little parade, and it was a huge deal. So, big deal for sure. we enjoyed it. You said earlier that um, people kind of stare at you a little bit, and especially when they find out that you're American. But how have the fans welcomed you? And I can imagine, you know, just from experience, kind of like in America when there's a – Foreign basketball player, it's a little exciting. So, how are the fans welcoming you guys over there? I mean, the fan, the fans all love, especially the kids. You know, <laughs> well, the kids are great now. Cause they're, they're funny too. The kids are like, you know, they come up to you in the streets, ask for high fives after the game, ask for like autographs or pictures and stuff. Like the fans are honestly, honestly great. It's it's been a good experience with them and with the younger kids, especially with us being a club that has you know multiple levels of teams like all the way down and so probably like I think eight year olds like I helped coach the other day. So even all those little kids that are in our club and our system, they look up to us a lot. So just trying to be a good role model for them and, and for all the fans to just have fun whenever they watch us play and just, you know, try and 
put on a show for him, kind of, and win games for him. No, that's that's about it. They, I mean, the fans are great here. They're very passionate about their basketball. For sure. They, they, they. I mean, they bring it every every week, no matter what city we play. And if we play here in our little neighboring city, Escortia, it's it's normally filled up. We don't have the biggest gym, but it's normally filled up with fans, and they're very passionate and are a big part of what we're trying to do. Who is more of a fan favorite, like with the kids and stuff, out of you two? Probably Spencer, just because he's been <laughs> Probably because I was, had been here last Jake, year. the biggest fan favorite is, I guess, our other our roommate. roommate. <laughs> we have a roommate For sure. who played at, he played at Nichols State. And uh, he has a Jamaican basketball. He, yeah, he's like dual citizenship. He's really American, but he has uh, citizenship from Jamaica. That's how we are able to have like three of us here. And uh, he's he's definitely he's a fan favorite. favorite. No question. Everywhere we go, it's JP, JP, JP. Uh, yeah. Powell, Powell, picture, Powell, Powell, please, picture. please. <laughs> la foto, la foto. Yeah, it's funny, but yeah, he's probably the fan favorite. And then Spence, too. And then. Maybe me three. <laughs> they just they just don't know how to say his name correctly. That's why they that's why he's not the fan <laughs> Do you guys still keep up with UCM basketball and UCM athletics? Yeah, I mean most of the time. I mean I have the notifications turned on on Twitter. I mean the MIAA and the UCM <laughs> uh, basketball page, and I just see scores or like things from that people retweet that I follow that maybe played in our conference um, when I was around. So. I keep up with it when I can. The time difference is a little difficult to try to watch sometimes, but I keep up with it yeah. as much as I can. We've watched a couple. We watched the Northwest game now. How do you get that? How do you get that? I love you. Um, other than that, <laughs> other than that, we haven't watched a ton of like full games. We watched a couple like here and there, maybe like a half or so. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and they got the dub over top ten in Missouri Southern the other day. We just gotta put it together. But they just gotta figure it out, and they'll be good. They'll be good by the end of the year. I think I think if they just, I mean, if they play like those two games every game, they'll be great. So they're gonna be there, buddy. Yeah. You guys said the time difference, you know, kind of affects that. But um, it's let's see, one twenty nine here right now, so eight twenty nine over there. Is that right? Yeah, okay. eight twenty nine. How was adjusting to that? Did it happen pretty quickly? Uh, be honest with you, um, I'm not adjusted. <laughs> I don't go to sleep until three a.m. most of the time. Maybe I haven't been. As, I've been. I haven't been asleep before four. I don't think the whole week. It's so pretty bad. It's we're pretty bad. We're 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 fortunate because. Our gym is kind of like a, it, the whole club uses it. So, like, the whole club, like, teams that are, you know, girls and boys all the way down to, like you said, maybe eight years old, use the facilities. And it doesn't normally open until, like, three in the afternoon. So, it's, 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 diff, I mean, it's easy for us because we usually don't have practice until in the afternoon. Like, maybe once or twice a week, we'll have weights at 10.30 in the morning. I, I go to sleep usually around too, for the <laughs> I'm not saying it's a four, but for the 10:30 weights. But so having adjusted, like being able to, to talk to family and friends, you know, back home, is is a is a big thing for us. And there's really no way to do that because if we wake up, say we even wake up at 12, we sleep until 12. Like nobody back home is awake, or I mean, maybe in the next hour or two, the early birds are waking up. So yeah. we. We, we tend to stay up and stay up real late and kind of wake up late the next day as well. And, like, if we want to watch a game or something, oh, if yeah. game's on, like... Like my mother. Like, the primetime games, the primetime games don't come on until, like, 2.30 usually. Right At there. least. And so, like, I wanted to watch the national championship for football, and it didn't come on until 2.30, and we had weights at 10.30, 10.30 the next day. So I stayed up and watched the first half, but I was like, I'm too tired. I got to go to bed. <laughs> And so I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, Clemson's in this game still, you know, like, Clemson's, Clemson might get it done. They look great in the first half. And I wake up the next morning, they just score another point. Like, come on now. <laughs> it was your fault. Clemson's blaming you. You went to I bed. I probably was. I probably should just suck it out, I guess. I went to sleep until the game started. I was like, I'm, no, I'm not doing this. The game started like two. I was like, no, not for me. So facing the language barrier challenge, how is your Basque coming along? Because you guys mentioned over there they speak Basque, some Spanish, right? But you know, main language. Um, and then... ando. <laughs> no, ando. No, ando. No, ando. No, ando. No, which is like uh, that's very, that's very great, very yeah, good, very good, very, very well, good. very something. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's so not, difficult. I mean, like, no, not great. It's like the third toughest language in the world to learn. Um, I had literally no idea, and no one knows anything about it. I had no idea about it until I was coming over here. Yeah, and I mean, it's not derived from anything. It's not 
like it doesn't, it doesn't come from anything. It doesn't sound anything like Spanish. It's or English or French or <laughs> anything else I've ever heard. It sounds. I, I won't lie to you. I I've, I've almost given up hope that I will learn. <laughs> I know a few words here and there because yeah, it's know, almost. What do we know? We know. Hi, hello, um, goodbye. How are, how are you? you? But good morning, good afternoon. Um, that's that's about the extent of water. it. Water. I've been here yes, for over no. a year, and that's that's the extent. Like, um, I can count to ten sometimes. Sometimes I forget. That's because our coach forces us to count. Count to ten, or for the for the people back home. I don't even know if I can. Oh, come on. B Idu Lao Bos Se Sasvi. I don't know if you say this one. Shorty. Shorty. Better that. Better. See, what? I'm on. That's how you count to ten. Yeah, great. Good job. Thanks Good for, job, thanks guys. For so, um, you know, communicating with teammates, like running plays, stuff like that, how, how does that all work? Uh, we're, we're really lucky. Like, almost, I mean, every dude on the team, every dude on the team speaks English to some extent, okay. to some extent, sorry. And, like, they're really good about if coach maybe says something. And our coach speaks really good English, um, our head coach this year does, which is different from last year. I had a different head coach, and his English was a was not great, and so our assistant is supposed to be our translator, and his English is it's solid. It's solid. It's solid. <laughs> he does a, he does a, he does a good enough job for what we need. But we're lucky this year because our our new head coach um, his English is really good, so he'll he'll relay it in Spanish. Um, and it helps too that like our roommate we told you about JP he played at Nichols. You know he's an American basically and. Our backup point guard played for four years in the states, so yeah, too. his his English is like perfectly fine. He's just a little quiet sometimes. Yeah, so we gotta get on sometimes. But for the most part, everyone speaks pretty good English, um, so it's not a problem when it comes to like if we need something explained. Like last year, I got here my first practice, I was so confused because someone maybe wouldn't have said something to me, and I didn't know what was going on. Um, now. I mean, I think Cobb does too. We understand enough in Spanish when Coach, even if he forgets to say it in English, we, we kind of know what's going on mm -hmm. um, to an extent. So both being on the same team, being former college teammates, does that add some chemistry? And uh, do you guys feel that? Do you feel like your teammates can, can kind of see you guys have a little, you know, extra sync between you two? I mean, like kind of a backstory um, to that is, is like before, you know, before the season ended last year, you know, I kind of – I was told that, you know, we were going to go out and look for an American big. And I was like, I, I know a guy um, <laughs> that I think is good enough to play here. I was telling, you know, the coach and the, and the GM about it. Like, I know a guy who has been injured this season, so his numbers aren't crazy good or anything but that. But I know he can help us and is skilled enough to play at this level. And I actually come to find out after about our seventh game in a row, I think we were 7-0, we were all, you know, celebrating after a win. And a couple of guys told us they were like, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I thought, you know, you hear about, apparently you hear about American guys just wanting to get their friends over to Europe and just meet their friends on the team. Um, so that's what all of them thought when Cobb arrived here two, you know, two weeks before me. And they saw him and, you know, they kind of... Everybody don't pass the eye test. Everybody looks at us. And, and, you know, we, we, don't, we don't pass the eye test, both of us. <laughs> and so apparently the, the, I guess the word around practice... You know, when Cobb first got here, was that I just, you know, I just wanted my boy to be here, and I just recruited him, and and he wasn't going to be any good, and I was kind of offended when I mean, not not really offended, but at the same time, I took it kind of personal. It's just like, guys, I like winning way more than I would enjoy having my boy here. Like, if he couldn't play, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have recruited him, you know, to try to come over here and play because at the end of the day, I'd rather win more than just my boy being here. But I mean, it's been good because I know how he plays. He knows how I play. Um, we know strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that, and we're really able to, to do some good things out on the court, um, and you can add whatever you need to Yeah, do. I think sometimes, you know, like, we lived together for three years in college, so, like, we're really close, so I think sometimes, like, our coach is, like, fed up with us. He has to be because sometimes, like, we get into, like, talking, you know, or arguing, and, like, we find like brothers sometimes, so I think people see that like our teammates and our coaches sometimes they're like just shut up or something, it's probably what they're <laughs> in their heads. But I don't know, so I think they can definitely see it. But it all adds up to a lot of chemistry on the court, I think. And like I know where he wants the ball, I know where he wants to go, what he wants to do if I'm screaming for him, and I think he knows like 
if I'm going to pick and pop or pick and roll or where I'm going to be, and he knows where I like the ball delivered to. So I think it's, it's been really good for us, for sure, especially with, with the two-man game and just with being comfortable with each other out there. And I'm glad he shut everybody up, too, because he's yeah. been playing well. So. I'm glad that you proved – Proved your yeah, he, he, he proved that I'm not one of those guys who brings his boy over to Spain. So, <laughs> um, you know, lastly, how do you guys spend your free time? Um, you know, you don't have any school, right? Just playing basketball, living in Spain. So, what all do you guys do? Uh, I mean, living life. Actually, I mean, we we live um, probably like 30 minutes to to the the beach. Um, we have about like three different options when it comes to yeah. cities. It's pretty cold now, though. But yeah, it's pretty cold right now. When you first got here, we were at the beach. Like, yeah. Once or twice a week, probably hanging out, laying, laying out on the beach. I mean, we we at the most we'll have probably four hours of, of if that's with with weights, shooting, and practice on one day. But most days, you know, we only have we only have two hours of practice. You know, a couple hours out of our day, and the rest of the day free to do whatever. Um, we live in some beautiful scenery, um, some beautiful places to go and explore, and and you know we we very live, mountainous, yeah, very mountainous, but also the beach is real close too. So we like to go to the the big city that's pretty close and and you know have have a day there, and yeah, stuff like that, or just go out and enjoy um, the weather because most of the time, I mean, it's a little cold right now, but it's nothing like it is apparently in Kansas City, from what I've heard from yeah, right friends. Now, so. I don't think it's. I don't think it's got below freezing. I think I've gotten yeah. soft though. I think yeah, it hasn't been under thirty two, and I feel like it's freezing outside. Yeah. too. I, I'm getting soft. I need to go back to the Midwest for sure. Uh, I need it. I need the wake up call for sure. No doubt. We're um, spoiled. We're spoiled for sure. And then, and then you know, I play a lot of video games too. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Pass, pass some time. Netflix and video games. That's about it. Yeah, a lot of Netflix shows have been watched. A lot. Of, I've been watching too many murder stuff. I, I gotta, I gotta chill. What's uh, what's your like go to Netflix right now? Series or movie or? Uh, I just finished you, and I the man now I look at relationships a little bit differently. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous about a little, a little hesitant on when it comes to. You know, the opposite sex, so I don't know. What are you watching right now? Confession tapes? I'm watching confession tapes right now. I'm about to finish that. So I've been watching me, too many murder too many murder shows. <laughs> then me, I'm watching I never watched Game of Thrones, so I knew it was gonna be a long series. So I started that. I've just been kind of slowly watching that. Mm-hmm. Um Game of Thrones and then I just started on Disney Plus. The Mandalorian, which is like a Star Wars series, because you know, I'm a little bit of a nerd, but yeah. it's all right, it's whatever. He's gonna watch the whole Game of Thrones, and then I'm gonna take him to where they shot Game of Thrones. How yeah, we've already been to one place there? where they shot some scenes from Game of Thrones. Yeah, so. they, they shot. I mean, I don't know how many people are like Game of Thrones fans. Like, I, I I've watched some, but not all of it. But like, Dragonstone is a huge thing in like season six and seven, or wow. season seven, or something like that. Yeah. It they it was shot at a place. I got to go last year. Hopefully. Um, we'll find a way and a time to take him after he watches the show. He needs to get on it when it gets a little bit warmer. But it's beautiful. Like some of the the just the landscape of, of the mountains and the and the ocean running together and stuff is really cool. So, well, thanks guys. Really appreciate it. Glad things are going well over there in Spain, and we're hoping to see you guys do more great things. Um, definitely let us know how the rest of the season goes, and hoping you guys can get up to that top spot in the division. Hey, us too. Bethany, thank you. Thank for you. Us the call. Hey, one, one more thing. Um, can you guys say bring your A game and bask? No, absolutely <laughs> not. No, too much. No way. All right, work uh, on it. Work on it. All right. How do you say it in Spanish? How do you say to bring? To bring? Yeah. No idea. No, no, no clue. No clue. No idea. Bring your. Oh, that's, that's, that's your homework. Thing. Okay, go figure it out. Hold on, hold on. Give us a okay. second. Kyle's a Spanish guy. And you know we had you know we got Google Translate on deck. No, you, you yeah because you bring try it try it you bring mm. uh, maybe two two tries two tries <laughs> two ah game. What's the game again? Juego. 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 You got it. You're the Spanish guy. Go. We got it. All right. Here's how I. Here, you want me to try it? Yeah. Okay. Good luck. One second. Juego. Okay. Tra. 
es tu juego A. Great, that yeah. was awesome. That's pretty good. Hey, this dude, this dude's Spanish is good now. He took four, four years? Four years in high school. I took two and didn't learn a thing. Paid off a little bit. I wish I would have listened a little bit more. All right, well, we'll see you guys later. Thank you again for the time, and good luck the rest of the season. All right, appreciate All it. All right, Bye. see you later.